you know, worst comes the worst, something bad happens to you, you know, like, <laughs> let's say you do, you, you killed someone and then you go to prison, you know, like, like, obviously you don't want to go to prison, but what are you going to do? Are you going to like rot away and cry your, your eyes out in prison and just for the next like 30 years, or are you going to try to become enlightened and do something with your life? You know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I've actually heard uh, a story about a guy. Uh, I think his name was oh, J- Damien Eccles. Going to jail was the most freeing thing that ever happened to him. Wow. That's a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> it was part of his path. Like if, if he didn't go to jail, he would never be as free as he is today. Wow. You are listening to the Boundless Enigma podcast with Sam Zins and Ryan Mulkentine. On this podcast, we dive into the mind, reality, and existence itself to provide you with boundless ideas and insights. Welcome back to the Boundless Enigma podcast. It's your boy, Ryan and Sam. <laughs> yes. Ready to talk. <laughs> Ready to speak all of this wisdom into your ears, pour our waterfalls of wisdom and truth into those caverns of your ear holes. Yes. Let's 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 get to talking. Let's talk about um life. <laughs> uh we'll talk about the universe. We'll talk about any anything you can think about, you know? There's there's no no, no limits here. No limits. It is no limits. truly boundless. And yeah. the enigmas we're going to crack, they're boundless. Yeah. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> all right. So just a minute ago, we were talking about um, Ryan having a, uh, what's it called? A profound. An insight. Pretty, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it was super profound, but it was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I just, just like started meditating this morning. I had a nice two and a half hours before class this morning when I woke up and I decided to meditate or just kind of sit there and do nothing and meditate esque, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I was sitting in my nice, comfy green chair, uh, taking in the rays of sunshine from my window. And I started to just sit there and I was focusing on this plant that I have that sits on this table in front of me. It's this nice uh, rainforest plant. You're supposed to keep it water, keep it moist. It's this nice green plant and I was focusing on it and I started like going between being really present and clear in the moment and then being unconscious, being lost in thought and then catching myself being lost in thought really like for a moment, letting myself be caught, but be consciously caught in thought now. Yeah. And I was consciously watching myself and I felt like it was kind of fuzzy. Like I feel the thoughts, like there's some, there's a desirous state when I'm thinking. And then I would come back to being present, hyper-focused on this plant. I could hear now I'm being visually here. And I just kept going back and forth and back and forth between these two states, but being conscious of them and trying to be like, not trying to force myself to be present, but letting myself be in both states and kind of compare and contrast them. And I don't know what happened, but as I was letting myself do that, every time I came back to the present moment, it was like clearer and crisper. And I'd go back and watch myself get lost in thought and these whatever fantasies I'm producing in my mind and then coming back to the present moment. And then every time it would just be clearer and crisper and I'd, I would be more re- like really present. Like every time I came back, it felt more real. And when, by the time I was finished, after like 10 minutes of doing this, I just like felt so good. I don't know why I, I, maybe this is something I need to explore more, but for some reason this like switching between these two states and letting myself do that, let like allowed me to access the present, like way more deeply. And I I don't, I felt so good after it. I don't know what that's about. Now I, I have a question. So you said you were going back and forth between these two two places. So can you describe that a little more by, by you saying you were in the present? Did you mean like, like explain what you meant by, by, by that? Because that's hard for me to grasp what okay. the present is. You know. So I was asking myself these same questions as I was doing it. Mm-hmm. I would be I catch, catch myself lost in thought and be like, well, what is that? Like, what does it mean 
like, what is this state? Like, what does that even mean to be feeling this way and thinking these things? And then what does it mean to be actually here? Like, what does that mean? And I kind of came to the conclusion that like being present, that, that state of like clarity is like, it, it's more real. Whereas like when you're lost in thought, it's more, it's not, it's not tangibly real. It's more like foggy and like, like they're like, I'm not saying thoughts aren't real, but there's a sense that like, they're not tangibly real. Like you can maybe turn a thought into reality, like manifesting or something. Right. But I came to this conclusion that like this right here, what, what I'm experiencing with my senses my sight, my hearing, my touch, that feels like it is true because I can directly experience it. I can directly know it through my senses. And then in the state behind that, when I'm thinking, when I'm in this like mode of like trying to get somewhere, trying to get something, it, it's a desirous state and it's a, it's not tangibly as real. It's not, do you know what I'm saying? I, I kind of do. Um, I guess that's why I asked that question because the present is so hard to put a finger on, you know, like I, I feel like it is. there's a lot of things that are, you know, you can describe and, you know, like perspective wise you can describe, but the present is just something that's so hard to just say, like, this is the present and like, here's why. Yeah. I don't know. It It is. Mm, I feel like I've heard. People like gurus say like y once you try to grasp that like that bliss that peace that you feel in the present moment and then try to claim it and keep it it'll go away. Yeah, that's you know as soon as you want to keep that clarity that moment of like ah oh, like oh this is this is peace this is love like right now the present like oh I'm not thinking as much anymore this is nice and then you start to identify with it you try to like. You're like, oh, I want this more. And yeah. then you lose it. That's when you lose it. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had moments when I've meditated or just in general where I've felt present. And then, you know, all of a sudden I'll realize I'm present. And then all of a sudden I feel like I'm slipping away from the presentness, you know? And I think that's due to thought right. kind of grabbing me and pulling me away because it's like, I, I'm, I'm forgetting that I need to remain, you know, like you got to be like cool as a cucumber sort of thing, you know, and just right. stay in that presence instead of trying to like see like, oh, what's this about? You know, it's like it's like you're trying right. to figure out what it is rather than actually just. Yeah, it. it's tricky because you're trying to figure out like what that place is of like clarity and peace, but it, it's really a place of just like being and right here. So there's not really thought involved. So when you're trying to think about it, about yeah. what that being is, it's not possible really to like mm -hmm. get there through thinking. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's so tricky about it, you know, because there's just not really, um, I guess there's not really a way to describe it, you know, it's just this, it, it is what it is kind of thing. And, um, right. I don't know. That's, but okay, but see right there, you're kind of describing what I was doing between being present and then being thinking. Okay. It's like, I, like you can kind of, we were just going through that process like right now by talking about mm. how the present moment you, it's like, it's just now it's just yeah. here. And then you're thinking and, the, and that's like a separate thing from the present moment, uh, even I though see. you can think in the present, it's somehow yeah, like, it, and I, I guess, I guess just, just recognizing that you're you're thinking is just thinking and it's not the present moment yeah is what can maybe help lead you to the present moment so when when you're present and then you're trying to think about being present mm -hmm. then you get lost in thought again but if you're lost in thought and you can be present while being lost in thought and allow it in the present moment it brings mm -hmm. you back yeah. to presence yeah yeah you know it, it, is that is that what people describe as the flow state that that lost in thought but also present in it is is that is that what people would describe as the flow state the flow state cuz like that sounds like what I think you said but it's like the flow state dude i don't know what the flow state is 
I feel like the flow state isn't being present, though. Something else. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The flow state's more so, like, you know, just letting, like, your mind dealing with a lot of knowledge that it already has and just going with it. You know, like, you're watching something, and it's like, yeah, "Yeah, I know how to watch something, so I'm just going to put my brain on autopilot and watch it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I I guess that's flow state. So, yeah, that's not what you're describing. Right. Hmm. So, anyway, I don't know. Have you any? Have you had any cool insights recently? I know you've been pretty busy, and that's one thing that's really annoying is when you're busy like this. Mm-hmm. It's hard to take time for like spiritual practice, for mindfulness, for getting uh, diving into right. reality. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that is actually what you just said is one of the insights that I've had recently. And um, I was just talking to you about this before we got on here about how, you know, I've gained this mindset with, with working out that it's not, it's like a low pressure mindset yet. I still do it. And that's a mindset that I'd like to gain with meditation and journaling. Um, because I've seen what it's done for me and I, I like, I've, I've lived it and I've just fallen away from it. And I think it's just due to this imbalance and all these things going on at once. And, uh, it's caused me to neglect my myself basically. And, um, you know, I think that's something that just isn't acceptable for me, you know, like that, I don't mean to say acceptable in terms of like, you know, like I have to do this, but it's just something that I want. Do you think there are times, like, do you think there will come a time in your life where to get to the next level, you're gonna, you might have to like brute force your way? Hmm. That's a good question. I, I think there are because, times where you do have to. Because I was watching, I mean, I know Leo Gura, he is like the master of brute force, bro. He, yeah, yeah. his discipline is like insane. Mm-hmm. And he's saying like, if you really want to get to like these next levels, at some point you got to hammer down. And that to me, I don't know. Like, I think it's possible, but... I think I'd have to be ready for it in a way. You know what I yeah. mean? I see. I, 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 know. I know what you mean, but I also, I feel like I understand what he's saying to an extent. Obviously I'm not claiming to be as you know profound or anything, but I, <laughs> I, I you know, I, I, I don't make like four hour long. Why is guru Sam over here? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell Leo how it is? Tell him how it is. Sam. Hey, Leo. <laughs> no, but um, no, I, but what I, I, I do feel like I do have experience in this brute brute forceness and yeah. And it, in the sense of like, when I deleted social media, I, I not only deleted that, I, I broke through so many barriers of my self and what I thought others would think about me and what, you know, how I was going to manage my life and all these other things. And I just basically cold Turkey did it, you know, and, um, and I brute forced it in the first like month or so, like, I, it was, it was, it was hard to adjust to. Cause there was like, it was so weird to like have this much time and not know what to do with it and, and feel weird about it because you don't want to come off like, Oh, like I'm deleting social media. I'm better than you guys, you know, like to my friends or family yeah. or whoever, you know, cause right. it's not like that. But I, in your own mind, like, I almost feel like that's what it feels like, you know, it, and, and you kind of have to like make an excuse as to why you're leaving social media and all these other yeah. things. Yeah you know, and, but I, I powered through all that. And I decided to, like, right. I don't, I don't care at all. I'm cold turkeying this. I'm, I'm not going to make up right. excuses. I'm just going to do it. And, um, right. I think that was a time in my life where I did brute force through something and it helped me a lot. Really? Yeah. I Interesting. Just, so there could be a time and place, but it's like, but there are times where brute forcing it can burn you out too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's like, how do you know, like hmm. what's going to be the right time to brute force it. Or if something is worth like putting, like putting all that discipline into something that you know is going to be hard work. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Like, how do you know? I, I think there's also different types of brute force because I think the brute force that maybe it, I sounded like I was saying was like, um, like this took a lot of work to do. And it, it I mean, it did, but I think the way that I look at brute force now in terms of what we're talking about is like emotionally and just like truthfulness, you know, like it, 
I, I brute force through my barriers in my mind of saying like, I feel weird about this or I feel awkward or I'm embarrassed or all these other things. Mm-hmm. And I think that by me knocking down all those things, I think that any time would be a good time for me to do that. It's just a matter of getting to a point where I, I'm, I, I do it. You know, it's just a matter of doing it. So it has to be something that you do kind of want to do. And it has to be something like aligned with your purpose and values. But because like if you try to like me when I was in nursing, trying to brute force my way to yeah. nursing school, it's not it's just not meant for me. So that's going to burn me out. But right. me brute forcing my way through building a website t- that connects people to spiritual mentors that like that that can much, much more easily make myself disciplined in doing that. Mm hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? No, in a way? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I think that's where I lack. I lack the brute force when it comes to, uh, I, I, I don't want to say tangible, but I'm going to say tangible just because that's the only thing that I can think of. Like, like when you say nursing or your website or, you know, wor- working in general, whatever it may be. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not bad at it, but I definitely lack in that area compared to the area of like getting through emotions and just, powering through different things that in terms of that um that's where i feel like i do a good or i try to do a good job you know obviously like right now it's catching up with me and i'm i'm not i feel like i'm not doing a good job but but i think that you know everything is life it's all together i just see it in those two different areas for some reason that's just what makes sense to me interesting i don't know where i was going with all that but no, that's all right. Huh. Brute forcing versus, but there is a beauty to like, there, there's something that feels really right about letting things kind of flow at their own pace as well. That's you true. Know? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things that it, there's not a right answer all the time and that it just depends yeah. on where you're at and what phase, you know what? Actually, I was just listening to this cool video about phases and chapters of life and how, cool some phases of your life you're you're, you're not going to be doing anything and you're just going to be thinking and incubating these ideas and marinating your mental juices and maybe you have a year where you just don't make any progress but you make mental progress you're making these ideas Mm -hmm. and and then you have an idea that that like is worth it and you and you just are inspired and then you enter the next chapter the next phase which is then you have it's a higher energy state and you go out and you you start building something, you start doing something, um, and then you, that's like when you have the it's like when you once you have the purpose, the mental passion for something, you have a vision that's like inspiring. Then it's like it becomes easier to then e- exert your force, your physical, tangible work onto the world. Yeah, no, that's so true. Like, like you develop yourself to a point where you've you've gained the knowledge and skill set and, and whatever else there may be in there. Like, you you've built it up to this certain point that helps you once you get to these other points later in life. Um, and it, it makes it not maybe not always easier, but it it gives you that skill set that maybe you didn't you wouldn't have had otherwise. And you know, that's just you moving on to yeah. another phase. You know, and some right. some phases you're gonna learn that oh wow I can apply things that I already know and this works or you might get to right. a point where you apply things and it just isn't clicking with you you know and it's right just a matter of what you, you you've done and even in the phases where it looks like you're not doing anything there's actually still growth happening but it's just internal you know right yeah absolutely yeah and it, it's stuff that you don't you would never realize really you know right i mean that's why i yeah i like to i i noticed these phases in my life you know i i feel like ever since like three years ago i've noticed this there's just been phases through my life and then i'll, I'll after i'm out of that phase or, or or so i think i'm out of that phase i i can look back and i realize like oh wow this this is what happened here you know and this is what i've learned from it and it seems so obvious in retrospect but obviously in that in the moment it didn't feel obvious at all. Like not in the slightest, you know, I, I think I'm in a process right now and I'm, I'm just not good at accepting processes. You know, I've, I've talked about it before, but you know, I, and I, I think I understand it on a small scale, but right now I think I'm just learning it on a bigger scale. You know, I'm trying to get myself out of a rut right now 
And that's a process. You don't just you don't just jump out of the rut at 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 the blink of an eye. You know, it, it takes time to get there. Yeah, definitely. And I think also there's this weird idea that like going through phases is like frowned upon or something. Yeah. That like, oh, it's just another phase. Like here's another phase. Mm-hmm. Like oh, now he's interested in this. Right, he's working on that, but just another phase. I mean. I think it's an I think it is like a natural thing that humans do. We go through phases. We get we we things catch our interest, we pour energy into them, and if they're not worthwhile, then we abandon them and go to the next incubating phase of nothingness and thinking. And then the new phase pops up and you're like, "Oh, I like this one." And I think it is naturally in us to go through phases because what if because it would be a bad thing to invest energy into something that's not worthwhile, but eventually maybe one of your phases will stick and you find mm-hmm. something that is truly valuable and, and, and has you can put your purpose towards. Then that phase can develop into something else. But I think you need to have phase you need to have phases to do that. Yeah, dude. Because you, you never learn unless you try things. You know, I mean, I, I mean, that doesn't exactly. learn anything otherwise, but you do have to try things in order to get places and, you know, you're going to fail along the way. You're going to fail a lot of times, but that's when you learn the most, you know, you, cause you, 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 you see what you did wrong and you see what didn't work. And now you try to better that in the future and, and try to avoid making that same, those same mistakes that didn't work, you know, and obviously yeah. you're probably still going to make those mistakes every once in a while, but you can get better at not making those mistakes. And um, yeah, I I think it's important to go through phases. Yeah. And like, like we've said in previous podcasts, like, uh, and everyone, everyone knows this is a very like widespread belief and truth that most people know is that you learn the most through your failures. You've heard it a million times, but it's freaking true. You know, Mm -hmm. how are you going to know what needs to change unless you screw up? And then you can watch that failure and be like, oh, let me do this instead next time. You know, it's the only way. Yeah, exactly. Not the only way. <laughs> you can also learn from other people's failures. Right. You can. Definitely. Yeah. No, no doubt about that. You know, and I, I, what we're talking about right now with, with failing and just going through these phases and whatnot, you know, I think that what I was saying a little bit ago about deleting social media and whatnot, that was what I felt like would be a phase that I felt awkward about, you know, cause I, like, like I was saying, I, d- I didn't know how people would react to it, you know? And that's, I think due to my understanding of how I've been reacted to maybe before in my life about going through a phase of some sort, you know, but I did it anyways. Yeah. And I think breaking past that barrier of what people might think about you or what you might think about yourself and just saying, screw it. I'm going to go into this phase. I'm going to try these things, you know, and just, yeah. forgetting about what else comes along with it. That's kind of like that, that, that powering through thing that we were talking about. And, you know, that's what can really lead you to discoveries. Yes. I wonder how many people are held back because they're afraid of what people think of them from, from just trying something from just posting a video online yeah. or something that could really help people. And, but the reality is that if they did post the video online, nobody would even, probably know or care or something like that. You know, yeah. they're, they're just afraid that they're afraid. This is what I'm saying about reality versus thought. It's like reality is here. It can be experienced. And then like the other side of like thought, it's kind of this like fantasy illusion. It's not, it's not real, you know, cause for mm-hmm. something to be real, it has to happen here. It has to happen where your senses can experience them. So in your mind, if you're afraid, of like posting that video online, starting some YouTube channel or something, because you're afraid that all these people are going to view it and then you're going to get made fun of. Um, but in reality, you post that video online and nobody even sees the video t- at all. It's like yeah. that's the reality, you right? Know? Yeah. And so, but it also takes, but you have to do something in real life to learn that truth. That yeah, exactly. And and I think you made a good point. Like we have thoughts and then we have reality. And I think we sometimes get them mixed up and forget that, you know, in reality, you can do anything that you want to do, you know, and in our thoughts, we yeah. kind of forget that we forget. And when, when we feel the pressure and like the pushback from people and our, and even ourselves 
just due to hearing these people say things or, or even, even just assumptions. It's not even always things that people say. It's just, it's a lot of the times, like, like what, what would my repercussions have been if I deleted social media? You know, like what, what was I thinking? You know, like, was I really thinking that somebody would actually be like upset yeah. or something like that? You know? Right. Right. It's not like, like your whole Instagram following is like, stalking you and like just waiting to see when you're deleted. And when, as soon as you delete, they're going to text you and be like, what the fuck? Yeah. No, I mean, a lot of people were pretty upset. I'm I'm just kidding. Wait, really? I mean, no, I was totally kidding. I was totally kidding. Nobody, that was my point. Nobody was upset. Everybody was like, actually, if anything, I got more attention, like positive attention from it of people saying like, Hey, good for you. Like, I think that's smart. You know, I wish I could do that. You know, like I've had so many people say that kind of stuff, you know, not one person has said like, Oh, (laughs) why'd you delete social media? Like you think you're too cool or something? No, but in my head, that's kind of what I was thinking before I deleted it. You know, I was thinking like, Oh, people are going to think I'm weird or too cool or all these things, but reality, no, you can do it. It's just nobody thinks anything of it. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I think the worst thing that can come of it is you think that people might think you're weird or something like that, you know? And I think I used to have that problem where I'd think that people would think I'm weird if I said or did certain things, but I've gotten past that a lot and it's kind of, it's, it's so much better to, to just be weird. If, if that's, if that's what you look at it as, you know, I don't even think that I'm weird, but you know, if anything, I'd rather be weird than too cool. The people that are going to call you out as being weird are afraid of being weird themselves. Exactly. You know, like they're afraid of, but the truth is, you know, you can go out onto the street right now and start yelling fat chicken and doing the chicken dance, walking around in the street and yeah. no one's going to stop you yeah. <laughs> and no one's going to even remember what she looked like, you know, right. five minutes later. <laughs> yeah. They're going to know that somebody did a chicken dance on the road and they looked crazy, but how are they going to know it's you? I don't know. It's just like these different things about how nothing is really that big a deal. And uh-huh. our, our minds can make things so out of proportion to like reality. It's like, these YouTube channels that like these prank channels that do like absolutely ridiculous crap and they do it week after week after week and people actually like love it and like (laughs) laugh at them in public. It's like, so it actually has the opposite effect of what you even think is going to happen. It's like, just take the risk, be freaking weird. And I bet you something even better will come out of it. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. And I, I don't know. It's just, it's just this, like, I think that's where so much anxiety comes from. It's just us being afraid of how we look, you know, in, in the eyes of the public. You know, I, I, I said this, like maybe even on our first podcast, I don't remember, but I was going into a, a store. I parked and I got out of my car, walked up the door, found out it was closed and I felt really awkward about it. And so I started walking to the store next door, even though I had no interest in going in there. And then I caught myself. I was like, what am I doing, dude? Like, I, I'm literally doing this just because I feel weird and I feel awkward that I just went up to a store that was closed. No, I'm not going to yeah. waste my time. I went back to my car and went right. to where else, wherever else I wanted to go. You know, and I felt so much better doing that. I didn't waste 20, yeah. 30 minutes of my time. It's like now you, it's like in that moment, you realized where you were like chained down in your mind. Like you, you were enslaved yeah. to your ego for a second. And then just in a moment you decided, no, I'm going to be free. And then you're just left. And that exactly. feels good to realize yeah. that you're free. You're free to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I was, I was just about to say, you I know? think a simple way of putting it is do whatever you want to do. You know, I mean, obviously within reason, don't go out and kill someone, but you know, like in reason, but, Hey, you know what? If, Honestly, I'm not condoning killing. Right. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> I think if you have the belief that good and evil are relative, you kill somebody, if that's what you want to do, what's going to what's going to happen? You're going to go to jail? You know, yeah. that part that family's going to that family's going to grieve. Honestly, your life is probably still fine. You can meditate, but you're going to meditate in, in jail and suddenly now you're enlightened. Bam. Who's, who is going to see that coming? <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? No, no. I like, you know, as, as much as like, it's hard to say that kind of stuff that you, you, you're very correct in saying that, you know, like the, I, I believe that there it's relative, you know, again, no one should kill anybody. Right. I'm yeah. just saying 
they are really fucked up situations that can actually turn out to be something good or, or like these really crazy things. Right. It, it's like reality versus what you think is going to happen. What's going to, what is, what you imagine your reality to be versus what reality actually becomes here right. is, is what I'm focusing on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, and I, I think that's, that's a good way to break anxiety. You know, you just kind of realize that you just got reality right here in front of you. And, um, you know, worst comes the worst, something bad happens to you, you know, like, <laughs> let's say you do, you, you killed someone and then you go to prison, you know, like, like obviously you don't want to go to prison, but what are you going to do? Are you going to like rot away and cry your, your eyes out in prison and just for the next like 30 years, or are you going to try to become enlightened and do something with your life? You know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I've actually heard uh, a story about a guy. Uh, I think his name was oh, J- Damien Eccles. You heard of him? No. He ended up, he went to jail for a really long time. And as he was in there, he essentially like came to like these like super enlightening conclusions and insights in jail and started like a mass movement of like inspiration and, and spiritual change when he got out. Wow. That is really yeah. cool. And he said like going to jail was the most freeing thing that ever happened to him. Wow, that's a hot take. Yeah, it was part of his path. Like, if if he didn't go to jail, he would never be as free as he is today. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That that just goes to show that you can really do whatever you want with your life, and you can try to find anything you yeah. want in life if you just put your mind to it. You know, and yeah, you can do it. There's, well, there's nothing- and it's also it also shows you how much control you really have over your own life, no matter what anyone else tries to tell you 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 can or can't do or or tries to control you. Even if someone literally puts you in a box where you can't leave anymore jail, you still have control over your, you will always have control over your own mind. If you shoot, actually, I don't actually know if that's true. What if you're like, what if you have like schizophrenia? That would suck. Yeah. I I don't (laughs) know. That would suck. <laughs> you know? No, I yeah, I don't know uh, what that would be like, um, fortunately, but that's a good question. You know, I think that's something yeah, that I'm, could I'm be... not going to pretend like I know, like I know this as truth. You know, I'm just, I'm just putting this idea out there as a possibility. I don't, don't take my, my words as truth, you know, yeah, I'm, right. yeah. I'm just as much on this path of discovering truth as anyone else is. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. would much agree with that. Um, you know, and I, I think that honesty though, about, you know, not getting too ahead of yourself and, and thinking that, you know, more than you actually do know is important on that path too. you know, that, cause you can, it's, it's so easy. I think it's so easy to, to, to get caught up and feel like you're doing something correct and then, and then get bit in the butt and realize like, okay, i wasn't necessarily doing that correct. Like I was doing it like 50%, right? But, you know, 50% isn't going to get you to where you want to be exactly, you know, or not all the time. Yeah. But then again, that's you failing and sometimes you got to fail. So true. It's just part of the process. At the end of the day. I wonder what are we scared to do with this podcast that like we want to be weird. We want to do something crazy with this podcast. You know, we're planning on, we had some ideas about like, I don't know, like eating a, the the death chip or whatever, yeah, right. or like <laughs> doing some crazy shit. Like, but but what? I don't know. I wonder if we're holding back on our podcast. If there's some, because I'm sure, or like anyone that's listening to this would want to see some crazy shit. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, you know I, I think something that, like, I don't, I don't necessarily yeah, necessarily think that I'm holding back in the a sense of like. I don't want to do something. I think that just sometimes it can be hard to, um, you know, want to invest the time almost, you know, because uh, let's be real. Yeah. We're not making any money right now <laughs> off of this. No. You know? And um, probably won't be for a long, long time, if ever. Right. Right. So it's kind of, you know, 
I, 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 I would drop everything today if I, you know, knew what it could be, but you know, it, it, it's hard sometimes to, 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 I guess, invest the time when, you know, there's so right. many other things going on basically. Right. Although this could fall into the category of thoughts versus reality again about like what, if the reality could be that this could be a full-time income in, in a, in two years. Yeah. But, but we'd never know if we, ne if we didn't put in the work, you know, cause like yeah. our thoughts now are yeah. like, Oh, maybe this will never be something or maybe, maybe the, that's the thing. We just never know what real reality is. This is where the fear comes from is you don't know. Exactly. Exactly. What's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, my, my therapist says something like, I, I think this is exactly what he says. He says like, you don't know what you don't know or something like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's true. Like how, how can you like, like here I am trying to like speculate about things, yeah. you know, but both negatively and positively, you know, it could be amazing or it right. could be a bust, you know, but it's like, I don't know anything. It could be mediocre and we could make a decent living off of it. You know, like it could be, yeah. I, that's not even, that's a thought that I've not even had before, you know? So yeah, I think that's just proof. Just like, uh, it's, when you don't know what you don't know, it's like, it's like, what was the universe before it existed? Yeah. You know, it's the same thing about like, how can you know what you don't like? Like, you don't know what you don't know. It's like, not only is there nothing, but like, there's not even the idea of nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's kind, that's of, kind like, of like, you don't know what you don't know, but like how, how like you really like, there's just a void there that you don't know. You can uh -huh. put thoughts there, but the reality is that there's just, ah, oh, you just don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. And that's, yeah, it's, it's so tricky. It's so tricky that it, cause, cause like you, I think we all want to know, you know, deep down, I think we all want to know what this is all about. Basically, you know, I think that's the golden question is like, what is, what is life, you know, and what, what is the universe? What is everything, you know? And I think that we can get caught up trying to figure it out. Kind of like us trying to chase that present moment when meditating, you know, it's like, you're not going to find this, med this present moment by chasing, you know, specu speculating and chasing it. You know, it's like, you right. just have to be it. You've got to be the present moment. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm trying to be present. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's, it's kind of tricky with, you know, knowing, trying to figure out what to manage while, you know, thinking, you know, thinking and talking and right. all this. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's tricky, but you know, that's the point of the podcast. You know, we're trying to get to the bottom of things and try to try to figure yeah. out what's going on in our lives and, in reality what, what, the, what this shit is i think it's something about like speaking it's like there are thoughts and that's not really as real as being here but when you start to speak thoughts out loud they start to take on like a little bit more substance mm -hmm. and so when yeah. when we're talking and con conversing about whatever this stuff whatever these ideas are it can start to i think this is what people are saying about like manifesting about like you can turn thoughts into reality yeah. in a way. And I think the, one of the first steps in doing that is just by speaking those words out loud in audio form. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can kind of piece together what your mind is thinking in one spot. Cause you know, our minds have like 15 million thoughts going at once. Whereas when you speak, you get to only speak that what you're speaking. You don't get to speak the, yeah the song going in the back of your head along with what you got to do later on and your homework that you have going, you know, you only get to speak what you're speaking. And I, you know, some, sometimes I, I actually do that alone. Like I'll, I'll be in my car and I'll be talking to myself. Um, and it sounds kind of crazy, honestly, hearing myself say that, but, <laughs> but, but it's, it's, it's something that just really uh, Not is crazy. beneficial because you just like you, you, put the weirdness aside, kind of like what we were talking about earlier and just not, don't feel that anxiety and you just get to just 
speak, you know, and say how you feel, yeah. say how your day is going, do whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of it. You can do whatever you want. Also think about the most successful people, the most top of the field people. Like you think that they didn't do really weird stuff to get where they are, <laughs> you know, oh, they did. The, the people, the people that don't do weird stuff, the people that are scared to do anything and they yeah. just sit and do what they're supposed to do are going to be the, the sheep. They're going to be the wage slaves. You know, they're going to be the bottom of the barrel staying at the bottom. You know, you don't think like Elon Musk, like he, he, this guy has got a weird history. I'm sure has done some crazy stuff. He's got, he's had to convince people <laughs> in mass of, to invest in him and who knows what he's had to do that to do that. Um, all of these like really famous influencers, like on YouTube, they do this crazy stuff to get views. Yeah. You know, it's like to get to a, wherever you're trying to go, you're going to have to, to put your ego on the line, you're going to have to be true, crazy. True. You know, and, and, you know, come to think of it, it, it what, what, what's the like cost, you know, what's the cost, you know, it, your ego, true. that's the cost. And yeah. And I think that's what these people that you just were talking about, what they have kind of gotten over, you know, to an extent, obviously, I'm not saying they completely have, but true. to some extent yeah. they've gotten over that. You know, and it yeah. takes that to get to those points, like you said. I wonder how it's like, so I think society really hates on these big billionaire people, you know, that they're like taking all this money and doing all this stuff that like yeah. killing the climate and stuff. But I was listening to this speech by Jeff Bezos the other day and the guy is like really inspirational, honestly. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. he's the richest man on earth and people not, I don't know if he is anymore, but he's really freaking rich and people are like tax him. Like he's waste. He's just wasting all these resources and nah, nah, nah. But it's like, if you listen to him, he's like a proponent of like serving humanity. It's like the reason that he got to where he was is because he believed in providing as much like value and service to people as possible. He, he built his business out of helping people. He wanted to get people products as efficiently and cheaply as possible. Like, you don't think that is a step forward for humanity? It totally is. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that I think people maybe get lost in the fact that like they have their own beliefs and they have these other motives compared to what maybe somebody like him has, you know, like he has the motive to get things to people at the cheapest cost and the quickest way possible. You know, whereas these people have the motives of, you know, of, uh, I don't know, like donating to charities or wh whatever it may be, you know, and I don't think it's fair necessarily to compare what people, th their motives are, you know, because he, uh, he obviously yeah. did something and basically dedicated much of his life, I'm sure, to, to, to figuring this out and doing this. And now we all reap the benefits of it, basically. And you know, obviously, maybe in our own minds, we would have rather had him donate all the, all his money over to kids in Africa or something like that who are starving. But, you know, th there's there's things that just happen and we have to appreciate what's happening right now. And, um, you know, if we have different beliefs about it, we can talk to them about it, but we don't need to hate on people for it. You know, and I think that's what our country yeah. is missing right now with this divide that we have going on. Is there so much hatred going on rather than trying to understand what's going on? Damn. You know, I was just thinking about, this is totally oh, off topic. Oh, yeah. But my parents have saved a college fund for me so that I can go to college. Very nice. College is really fucking expensive. Yeah. And I could live off of $15,000 a year, rent, Wi-Fi, food, whatever. If, if, Instead of me going to school, if I if I lived off of that money for the next, I don't know, four years, and and had all of this time to devote to the podcast, to my website, to my different like YouTube channels, I know 
that I would make, I would pop off, bro. I would like, <laughs> like I would make this, I would have so much time to put into the podcast, getting good guests, coming up with great ideas for this thing. Uh huh. And it's like, why is college valued over like what I just said, essentially, if they could be just as valuable long-term? Right. Yeah. I, I think like society and is, has just kind of programmed us to believe that like college is the way to go, you know? And I, I think, I think that yeah. it, it's kind of dismissed sometimes what, what's, what goes on with podcasts or, you know, that, that's just one example, but you know, people don't realize that there's, there's a lot of value in it, you know, cause yes. like, they're so caught up in the tangible like reality that we have you know, instead of realizing like, Oh, there's more to it. There's conversation and relationships and whatnot. The more that I am going through college, the more I'm getting sick of it. And the more I'm, I'm like thinking like, this is a waste of my time almost. Like if genuinely I'm going to be building a business for myself, I don't need a degree for that. I'm wasting, I'm taking away the time from the thing that is going to be my living one day, hopefully. Yeah. It's like, then what am I doing? Like yeah. what? This right. Is, it's starting to get, I'm starting to like realize like, damn, I kind of am a sheep going through the systems. Like launch. Like, I don't know what you're saying. It's, it's, it's no, I'm I getting kind of pissed off, man. I know. I, I got dude, tricked. I, I <laughs> no, I, I feel 100% the same way. Like couldn't agree more. Um, I felt that way this, you know, I felt this way for a couple semesters now, but this semester it's really hit me as I, you know, came on today and told you like, I'm just tired of shit. You know, this shit is just really frustrating and just taking up time from what I really want to be doing basically. Yeah. So I, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. It's, it's, it really is this, this damn gate. It's just hold, holding all these sheep in there. And right yeah. now, you know, we're part of it. <laughs> True. Oh, but then the thing is though, like <laughs> I I can't just I can't just not graduate because I've gone three years in now. Yeah. And you know what this is like I, I almost I owe it's an obligation to like my parents to graduate. And once I graduate, then I'm free to kind of do what I want. Yeah. Hey, if that, you know, if that works for you, then, you know, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. No, yeah. It, the, you know, there's a lot of pressure to do that. You know, I feel that pressure too. You know, I don't, I don't think my, my parents would like disown me or anything if I dropped out of college, but you know, I think they definitely advocate for it. And, um, I think that, that, that there's that pressure along with the societal pressure in general about getting a degree in order to do what you want to do. You know, like I'm into psychology and I, I think that sometimes maybe I can, can narrow my my eyes on the fact that like you can do more things than just become a therapist or, you know, work at a clinic of some sort, you know, like you can do anything, you know, and uh, psychology yeah. isn't limited to, to what I might think it is right now. And also think about like you're getting a degree to go work for a business like at some point you're you're working for a business. Even the government is like the largest, it's the biggest business that has control over all the other businesses. So even if yeah. you work for the government, it's still kind of a business in a way. Yeah. And somebody came up with the idea for all of these businesses and somebody runs these businesses and was mm-hmm. able to grow them and create them and hire you. So why can't you bypass the system and make your own? Yeah, seriously. You there's can. Nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing stopping you. No. The only, the only thing that's stopping me is me. That's it. Yeah. Quite literally. And um, I think that's that anxiety, you know? It's just like in uh, that ego of like being scared to put your neck out there and try it. Yeah. I almost wonder, is there a fear... Like this, uh, earlier we were talking about getting burnt out, brute forcing it, like grinding on something, being super disciplined on this one thing for over and over. And that's really emotionally difficult to do. 
right? Yeah. But I, I almost wonder, does it, if you go back all the way to the beginning of where that feeling comes from, does it come from fear? Like, are you afraid of having that responsibility? Are you afraid of the emotional work that, that that's going to be? Does it, does it all come from fear at some point or fear of being like locked into this grind? Yeah. Yeah. Or, and, and I feel like we almost make it out to be like, you get locked in, but in reality, like you don't have to be locked in, you know, you can, yeah. you can put your feet in the water and then step out if you want, you know, like you don't have True. to lock into it, but I think maybe our egos and that anxiety feeling maybe makes us feel like, we have to because you know we put on we put this face on this is what we are you know rather than recognizing we don't have to remain that way dang bro i'm like thinking about this and if i really if i really wanted to i could start grinding so hard and i i would know i'd be successful but what is stopping me from putting in the work like, what is it? It's hard. Like, what is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, I'm sure there's, there's many factors, you know, I think that, I think there's so many variables with anything we do. And, um, I think it's just a matter of, you know, working in on ourselves and seeing what it actually is, you know, and, and just also like not being scared of it. Yeah. There's the fear. Because all physical work is difficult because it's emotionally difficult, which is weird in a yeah. way. Yeah, it is. It's like, you know what I mean? Even like digging a trench hours and hours, that's really physically difficult. But it, what's even more difficult is, is the mental side of it. Can you, how long can you keep going mentally? You know, yeah. that's, that's the whole game. Cause you know, you're physically, your body has a limit to where it can go before it breaks down. Right. right? Yeah. But how far can, so, and, and you're not hitting that limit digging this trench, right? You know, you're not hitting that limit. So the limit is, is mental. Same with all this grinding work that you'd need to be successful running a business or doing whatever it is. It, it's, you could physically stay up in, in like 18 hours a day working on something every single day for the next month you can physically do that and not die you would be okay but it's the yeah. mental yeah it's the mental pain that stops you mm -hmm. you yeah. know yeah and it's just a matter of like i guess finding that balance between the two you know of where where you feel like you can you can remain physically in shape and intact but also remain emotionally intact but get done right. what you want done you know, and sometimes what you separates it really is. I think it's just like, you have to sack, like you have to sacrifice your comfort and feeling good and peaceful and not burnt out. Like you have to sacrifice that feeling to accomplish these things. Honestly, I think I'm like wrestling as we're talking about this. I'm like wrestling with this concept. I'm thinking yeah. about it and I'm wondering if I really want to accomplish the goals I want to accomplish, I think you just, you just have to feel bad while you're doing it sometimes to get to where you're going so that you can feel good later. Yeah. And cause, cause sometimes that, that unhappiness will lead you to happiness. It's just a matter yeah. of get, getting out of, out of it, you know, trying to fight through it, you know, fight through the night and get to the day, you know, and, uh, is the, is the success worth the, like the sacrifice of comfort right now right i don't know what if the success isn't that like as good as you thought it was going to be though true yeah that's that's a good point you never you you don't know and that's that's why you just gotta i guess you know not uh what's it called just think about it all day and rather go out and do it you know because you never know until you try it it's like you know? It's like jumping into a cold pool. Yeah. You just gotta, yeah. you just gotta right. get in. Yeah. Just get in and then give it a minute and you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Probably. You might be <laughs> a little cold, but you won't be as cold as when you first jump in. And that fear exactly is the hardest challenge to get over. The, the initial jump is the hardest thing. Cause once you're in, you're experiencing it. Yeah. You can tolerate it. Exactly. Exactly.
yeah, no, it's a it's very good comparison. I like that because yeah, you just you, you don't know until you do it. And if if you sit there, you can sit there all day next to the pool, just acting like you're going to jump in, just like trying to force yourself to jump in. But unless you actually just jump in one of the times, you're just you're going to be yeah. out of luck and you're going to miss all the fun, you know. True. But maybe not everyone is meant to to jump in, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. th- there there needs to be there there needs to be workers for businesses. Not everybody can be a CEO, yeah. right? So there has so there has to be a way also to be happy and content as the unaccomplished person, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I think you could also you know you could also say that you could you know, back to like pool comparison, you can always go over those steps, you know, and at the pool and like put both your feet in the pool and like see how it feels. <clears throat> and, you know, like, you know, dip your toes in and see, see what it's like, you yeah. know, and, and maybe you'll find out this is too cold for me. Like I, this isn't for me right now. You know, yeah. I don't want to do it, Then don't do it. Yeah. And there are plenty of lawn chairs next to yeah. the pool that exactly. are there for you to lay in and enjoy the sun so yeah. that you don't have to, you know, it's like there are tried. jobs like that that are, you know, you work 40 hours a week. Maybe it's kind of a grind, but then you have the rest of your week to do whatever you want. Right. And so yes. you don't have to take the jump to be to push yourself all the time, but it's an option, just like it's an option yeah. to lay on the lawn chair. Yeah. And I, and I think what's so important about all that is, is like when you dip your feet in and try it, like you're allowing yourself to have the opportunity to do it if you want to do it, but you're also allowing yourself to back off from the app opportunity if you don't yeah. want to do it, you know, and you're not, right. you're not pushing yourself one way or another, you know, right. and who knows, maybe eventually you will want to push yourself and fly into that yeah. pool and cannonball, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you just want to cannonball right back onto a chair, you know, you, yeah. who cares, you know, you're just doing what you want to do. There's no right or wrong way about it. And I think True. that's what's important. Or maybe, maybe you slip and you fall into the pool and you and you <laughs> yeah. find yourself just with the, all this responsibility and you're in it and now you're in it and you didn't have a choice about it, but yet, you know, the pool's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe you slip and crack your head on the concrete and then die. <laughs> and then honestly though, seriously, maybe you slip, you crack your head open and you go to the hospital. That shit happens too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, exactly. And I think what we're talking about makes me so much more aware that there's so many possibilities that you just can't imagine them. Like you just can't. Right. So that's why you just got to test things, you know, and and just see what happens. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. And maybe if you become enlightened, you can become the pool. Dude. (laughs) (laughs) That you can like... And the concrete. <laughs> Damn, everything. You become the blood seeping out of that cracked person's head. <laughs> you become the dead person. <laughs> yes. Mm. I don't know oh. what I'm talking about. It may me neither. That's the fun of it, though. We, need... yeah. we don't know what's up. <laughs> True. Uh, all right. <sighs> well, some good stuff as always. Think? Good stuff. Yeah. Wrap it up. Let's wrap it. All right. This has been the Boundless Enigma podcast. Thanks for tuning in. You guys can DM <laughs> us or email or whatever. I don't know. What if there's any way to con- whatever possible way to contact us, feel free to do it. We'll yep. respond. We'll talk about it on the podcast. We love you. Sam, any final words? I love them too. We 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 love them. That's it. That's that's all I got. Yes, we love them collectively. Collectively, yes. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. See you next time. Oh, next Adios. time.